Hey, so Max and I are here to explain how we go from our food scraps to making our biogas, which we've been cooking with. We are able to produce approximately half a year's worth of cooking gas by uh, using the equivalent of about one fully ripened pawpaw every day. Now, mostly we use our uh, the scraps from our kitchen, mostly fruit and sugars, which produce gas the most quickly and our lawn clippings with a little bit of cow poo to make them produce lots of gas. So here we go. That's how we create our material for the biogas, so it's nice and fine. And we go from here, come this me, over to where our gas is burning here. Just bring it right down here. This is our a little burner we've made out of a tuna can where we've hit, put nail holes from the inside out to create little gas holes and it mixes with oxygen. This is a post oxygenation burner where the oxygen and burning occurs at the actual site of where the flame is. Over here we have a pre oxygenation burner where the oxygen comes and is mixed with the gas and burns at the point here which is more efficient but can be a little bit harder to regulate when you don't have good quality gas so we have plenty of wind. The others are far more stable flame on most occasions. We've got five different stages we're going to explain today. So this is from the kitchen to where it burns and now we're going into the backyard to show you the system. And we're just going to show you the layout of the biogas system. Down here in the orange drum, not sure if you can see it there, we have a batch system where we put all of our lawn clippings in with some water and a little bit of cow manure. And that takes approximately three days to start producing viable biogas. Over here we have our pawpaw tree, which produces a lot of the uh, sugary product we need. So it's powered by the sun and the water that we give it. And from that it develops pawpaws, and the pawpaws we use both to eat, but also to power our biogas system. And approximately one of our large pawpaws will do enough cooking gas for our day's cooking. Beside the shed there, there are two 200 litre containers which are constant feed feeders which we pour the effluent from our um, blender with all the food scraps into each day and it produces gas which is then piped out around the shed to a strange looking thing which is a floating tank to collect the gas. It floats on water like other floating containers and on that we have series of bricks to create pressure. From there we have a pipe which runs along this little fence line okay, and comes back up into the house. Okay so this is our batch biogas producer. So what we've done here is we've put approximately 170 litres of water in this with the mowing of our lawn clippings and it needs to be green young lawn clipping water into the container, a bit of cow manure mixed up and basically what happens is for about three days it produces a lot of carbon dioxide so we've connected this with this tap here to this floating drum and it will produce probably three 30 litre containers of mostly carbon dioxide for the first three days and each time this drum comes up with the gas we'll then put a, a, a light to it to see if it actually will light and once we can get a, a constant flame that's held by the gas within the floating tank it's ready to go to join our biogas system. As part of reconnecting it we have a water trap down here so any any gas that comes out of here as, as water vapour condenses and is excluded through the water trap and joins our gas line. So here we're just going to show how we set up the blender for a constant feed with our blender material, which is mostly sugary slush because it's been blended. Done that while this is on. Into our watering container, which we then mix with approximately four litres of warm water. Now ready to go into the constant feeder. Ok 
Okay, so here we have our constant feeders that approximately 160 litres of, of water in a large black container with an inverted container as use the lid to catch the gas. They're all in a, uh, a setup where we can actually keep the temperature warm with insulated layers around. So here we have the uh, the top container which catches the gas. It's under pressure, it's held down by this wire. It's a tap with a lead away and the gas goes towards our floating tank holder. Here you can see the bubbles which is the actual gas being generated. This is on the edge here, it tells us it's actually working. Here is our inlet feeder and over here we've got the effluent outflow which goes back to the garden. Two pots. So, now we'll demonstrate how we load it up. Very simple process. Literally just pour the blended material into the container. Usually do this once every day as part of our compost run. The effluent flows out and goes into the garden and this keeps feeding the, the biofeeder. We've got a second digester here, same idea. Pour it all in and we'll rinse that out. Okay, over here we have the runoff from the effluent, which is collected in a small garden watering can, which can then be poured on any any of our plants and it makes a fantastic fertilizer. Beside it here we have uh, another water trap, that little yellow container down there and up here a gas line and the gas line goes around the back of the shed here and joins a floating tank. So down the back here hidden well away is our floating drum which collects the gas and pressurizes it for, the, for our barbecue. It's a very simple homemade contraption out of some, some old fencing and a small old uh, swimming pool. It holds approximately a thousand litres of water. On top, inverted, is an old rainwater tank got from a local hardware store, which is inverted and floating full of gas. We have uh, some shade cloth over the top to keep the mosquitoes out. There's a dengue fever and other mosquito-borne diseases, and we don't want to breed a whole lot of mosquitoes. But we have a stack of pavers, three or four pavers in a bag at the top here, which creates which creates the weight to, to give us the pressure required. The floating drum holds approximately 500 litres, and on a good warm sunny day, we'd produce 300 to 350 litres from approximately the equivalent of a kilo dry weight of sugar. Most of this sugar would be in the form of slightly off or overripe fruit, bread, avocado, other materials, anything of organic matter. The main thing is to not have any moulds or fungus involved as it produces penicillin or an equivalent and very rapidly kills the entire biological process. From here you can see we have our gas lines, one coming in from over the back from around the shed, joining here and coming up and into the gas container and joined to that is a black one which is actually now underground and returns back to the house to feed the barbecue. We're in the middle of summer here in North Queensland so there's lots of fantastic tropical growth with bananas, pawpaws and other fruits and through the winter things do get much cooler and much leaner. So in summary, you need to keep the water warm between 30, 37, 40 degrees. You need to keep the water alkaline or slightly alkaline, add bicarbon soda as required. And you need to, to use as much sugary product as possible because that will mean that the, it breaks down quickly and produces lots of gas quickly. We also like the floating drum because of the uh, it, it allows carbon dioxide to dissolve from a higher concentration in the container out through the water and into the atmosphere. We hope you enjoyed our presentation.